Well, good afternoon. Today I am with Andrew Corbett, and uh, we're going to get a little get to know a little bit about his family today and a little bit about what he does over at Crew. So welcome, Andrew. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you, Bob? I am really, really doing well. Um, better than I deserve as a, a radio personality that I'm sure you're aware of says all the time. So let's, um, I wanted to start with just uh, North Shore, being a fellow North Shore resident. Uh, tell us a little bit about, um, well, first of all, your, your family makeup. Uh, tell us about your wonderful wife and your four kids, and then uh, kind of go into or transition into how you discover North Shore and, and why, why you chose to live in this community. Yeah, uh, well, my wife, Jill, we've been married. We just had our 12-year anniversary uh, on Sunday. Uh, so we've been married for 12 years. We've got four kids. Um, we have a just finished up third grade, so going into fourth, our oldest, Elizabeth. Uh, and then Claire Jane just finished up first, going into second here at Moss Park Elementary. And then a four and a half year old Jackson, uh, who's in uh, Spring of Life uh, preschool. And, and our youngest Maverick just turned two on Monday. So, uh, man, you have your hands full. We do. It is. They are quite a handful, but they're 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 good overall. But they're definitely a handful. So that's awesome. So tell us about. Uh... What brought you to uh, the North Shore community? Well, what brought us to North Shore initially uh, was we moved down. We were, we're on staff with crew. Um, and so we were looking to be close when we moved. We transferred down. So we've been on staff with crew for over 15 years. We moved down here in 2012, 2013. Um, and we were looking for, we wanted to be close. So like we didn't like commuting um, where we lived before. It was a fairly close commute. We like, we don't want to drive for a half hour each day. So we were trying to be close. Uh, and just knowing the schools, the school system here in Orlando, we wanted to be, we wanted to be in this area. So, um, so yeah, we, we found uh, North Shore and we've been here for a little over seven years now in our house. So that's awesome. I'm amazed um, how many people I talk to that don't know what crew is. So in case there's people listening, they're like, well, I, he's close to crew, but I don't know what crew is. Kind of describe how close we really are to them. And, it, again, it just amazes me how many people don't even know because it's kind of hidden a little bit. Yeah. From door to door, it is three miles from my house to cruise headquarters um, to get into the parking lot. And um, I've biked it a few times, so I know exactly exactly how close we are. So it's it's really close. I know it's hidden back off of Moss Park Road down there at the end. Like Most people won't see it unless they're heading out to Lake Mary Jane or heading down to the, the actual park down there. But But yeah. It's a it's an amazing place. It's huge. I've had uh, a couple invites to go out there and tour the place, and it's, it's it just blows you away the first time you go there that this that the, the resources and the and the work that they're doing there is happening right here in our backyard, and so many people don't know about it. That's really that's crazy. Yeah. So, what's your favorite thing now that you've been here seven years in North Shore? What's your uh, kind of what's your favorite thing about living in North Shore? Um, I would say it's the community, the people, um, even just within the pandemic that we've been facing, like just seeing how people have come together and there are different things like to create community, uh, what's been going on um, as far as like scavenger hunts, other things for kids, um, our neighbors, we love our neighbors, the people around us are all great people. Uh, and so it's, it's been a privilege to get to know them. And um, like even my in-laws also live in North Shore. And so their, their community, their people around them are also great as well. So um yeah i think that's our favorite part about it um, not to mention the proximity to to work and and other easy easy access to fun things within orlando that's really cool really cool so you talked a little bit about crew already why don't you give us a kind of an up you know, like a i don't know a description of what you do and you know what goes on over in that building that some people don't even know is there and uh, just kind of get us up to speed so people in north shore won't have an excuse anymore to not know what's going on in crew well, I mean, CREW is a large mission organization that's uh, our, our headquarters here in Orlando. Um, really, our goal and our desire is to create um, an environment where people can come and know Jesus. Uh, we want to see people know who he is, and we want to take the gospel to the world. Uh, my wife and I, as we serve within the campus ministry, which focuses on college and high school campuses within the U.S., um, we work kind of in a behind-the-scenes way. Uh, I specifically work and lead a team of audio and video production uh, volunteers and staff to be able to run our conferences and events. Um, typically we're running about 20 
or more conferences in a year um, where we're really just creating that place, that space for our, for our students to come. Uh, the events range from training where we're training new staff and interns to evangelistic events where we're sharing the gospel uh, to uh, sending new missionaries, whether like as they've come on and joined our organization, now we're sending them out to the world. Uh, and one of our major highlights that we love is during our Christmas season, we do what's called winter conferences, uh, where my team specifically goes out across the U.S. to typically, I think this year we had like four different events that we did where we were sharing the gospel and uh, creating spaces for people, college students to come. And really enter in wherever they're at in their spiritual journey, whether they were searching and seeking and not knowing who Jesus was, or um, they had already become a believer and they were, they're just taking that next step of, of growing in their faith. Or they've been a believer for a long time and they're just continuing to, to learn how to share their faith with others. Uh, that's one of our highlights. Um, yeah, these events, they're just a great place for us to create an environment uh, or a space to be able to, to see people go. Um, I was just telling you a little bit earlier when we chatted, I was I kind of like in us, and now I'm going to like use this analogy all the time now, where the Levites, where as they wandered the desert, they would tear down the tabernacle and then they move it to the next place and then they'd set it back up and then they tear it down and set it back up. And they were, they were setting up that holy of holies, that place where people can encounter, encounter God. Uh, and that's really what we get to do. Um, my wife, Jill, her scope is a little more limited because like we mentioned, we got four kids. Uh, so she really only does one event a year where she's helping lead the logistics team for for our leadership conference for the campus ministry, uh, where we'll have about 700 leaders from across the U.S. on the local level, at different college, universities, campuses, high schools, and then executive directors as well as national directors um, as we come in and, and create a space for them to fellowship with one another uh, and be able to be developed professionally and also uh, just in their walk with God in the bringing in the word. Um, so that's what we get to do. Um, that's a little right. bit about, there's a lot more to crew than what we do, but that's, that's just such a great picture. Um, how many, how many people do you have on your team? Andrew? My team consists of three full-time staff. I had an intern this past year and then about four or five volunteers that work with us throughout the year. Um, that team is growing and has been growing over the last probably two or three years. Um, but, but yeah. Is it, are most of those people in this area or are they around the country or how's that work? Yeah. So some of them are here. I've got three full time that are here in Orlando. The intern, she just finished up her year. She's moving back uh, home as she's getting married. Um, I have a part-time staff member that's in California, and then I've got volunteers that are spattered throughout the whole U.S. Um, so they're just, they serve, most of them serve with crew, but they just volunteer with our team uh, at different events throughout the year. That's really cool. So you, you mentioned you do 20 plus events. What get, kind of, what is, what does one of those events look like? So if you had your, I don't know, there probably isn't a prototypical event, but if you could just describe maybe your last event, um, you know, what does that look like? Is it a, is it a one day thing? Is it, a, you know, as you're setting up the tabernacle, as you like to say, um, what does, uh, you know, what does that look like and how long is it set up? Is it a you know, multi-day event? Is it a, you know, a couple hours? What, what, what does it look like? Yeah, most of the events that we do are going to be, they're going to range between three and seven days. Um, like seven days will kind of be on the long end. We do have one that's around seven or eight days. Uh, but we're going to come in. The last one I think I did was in January. It was out in California. Um, it was a winter conference for college students. So we came in and we set up um, the space. So we had an, over the MLK weekend. So it was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday morning was the final. So three days plus a morning um, was the total length of the event. But between three to three to seven days is our average uh, a length of time for each event. So. That's really cool. So how has, <laughs> maybe it's obvious, but how has COVID-19 affected uh, what you do over the last, you know, two and a half, three months now? Uh, yeah, basically all in-person events have, have been canceled um, for the foreseeable future um, as things open back up. But what it's done is it's caused us to shift uh, to online. Um, the trainings that we've done to bring, as we bring on interns, as we bring on our new staff, those have gone online and through calls like we are right now, a Zoom call, um, just being able to meet with and share and do things like that. Um, also, I don't know if you had seen or 
that I had watched, but there's an event back in, back in April called Be Still, um, where we had Crawford Loretz, uh, Louis Giglio, Mark Gauthier from uh, Crew. Uh, he's the executive director for the campus ministry. Uh, just did a, it was an hour, hour and a half long event uh, that was streamed on Facebook and YouTube. Um, wow. So we shifted our skills from doing in, live in-person events to doing online events like that. And then we did a follow-up just a, a week and a half ago or so um, called Reflect, uh, Reflect Jesus. Uh, so both of those events, uh, it's kind of been the shift for us is moving from doing in-person ones for the time being to doing things in, in an online capacity and doing, taking our production skills to be able to create a, an event that would be not distracting to people that they would be able to hear. Uh, what God had to say and, and uh, be moved and challenged in their faith. So you're, you're innovating through this COVID-19. We, we are innovating. We're using the tools that are out there available to us uh, to be able to, to be able to reach our goal and our scope of what we're looking That's to do. That's so awesome. That's yeah. really cool. So what would you like the, the people that, that are watching this say, uh, what would you like their, their, their takeaway to be? Um, you know, is there something that they can do to help um, your, your, your ministry is there something that uh, you know besides maybe besides sharing the video and passing that along? Mm -hmm. uh, what are some things that you would like people to take away from this um, that they could help you do what you, uh, do what you do? Yeah, well, it's a it's a great thing. I think there's there's probably a lot of people that are on staff with many different organizations out there that are kind of in the same in the same boat as us. But we as we've been working for Crew for over 15 years, we've been responsible for raising our own funding, and we're just in a season right now where we need. Uh, we need probably about 20 to 30 new partners um, or more, depending upon at the level that they give around. We generally ask for about a hundred dollars a month, but that's where our need is right now. And I know there are other people in need. So even if they were just challenged, like, Hey, we, we already give to somebody within one of these organizations, they might be needing a little bit more if they would be willing to consider and seeing what God might have them do if they have the capacity. Um, but I'd love to sit down on a call like this and just share more specifically what we do, a little more about our family, if they'd be willing to do that. Um, share how they can be a part of, of helping us continue on in the work of what God has called us to do, of helping using our skill sets to be able to create these places for, for people to know who Jesus is. That's awesome. So if somebody wants to help, how do they reach out to you? What's the best way to contact you? And yeah. are there any other resources that you, you want, want to share through this video? Yeah, they can uh, shoot me an email, um, which I think you'll you'll go ahead and post. It's just okay. my name at crew.org, andrew.corbett at crew.org. Um, they can reach out to me that way. Um, there is a giving site uh, that you could send them to if you wanted to post that as well, where they could go and take a look. Happy to. There's a little more information about it, but I would love to. Be, I'd love to be able to have a, a video call, and so just shoot me an email saying, "Hey, I saw your video. I'd love to chat with you." And see what you're doing. Uh, I'd get back with them pretty quickly, and we can set up a time to meet. So, that's awesome, Andrew. That's awesome. So we will um, we'll put uh, Andrew's email uh, at the end. You'll see a little box, uh, and we'll also put um, we'll get a link to to the other site that you were talking about too. So I'll mm -hmm. get that from you, and I'll make sure we post it in the video. So mm -hmm. any closing comments before uh, we we say goodbye. No, I just uh, appreciate you and the time that uh, you made available for me to be able to oh, share what we're cool. doing and the uh, opportunity and platform to, to let people know how they can help Absolutely. us out. I've, I've enjoyed our talk and learning uh, more of what uh, you do in the different divisions that are going on at, at Crew and just all the great work that uh, the people are doing over there. So that's always fascinating for me. And uh, man, thank you. I really appreciated this time. And uh, we'll get this up and hopefully get some people reaching out to you as well. Great. Thanks, Bob. All right. All right. Have a great day. You too.